During the Vietnam War, the battle for public opinion was just as important as the war on the front lines. The United States invested millions of dollars into rural development and electrification in what was called winning hearts and minds. The North Vietnamese and Viet Cong emphasized the David and Goliath War of peasants fighting and winning against the world's greatest superpower. In the United States, photography and journalism proved the means by which the truth of the conflict was being spread, and as more people began to see the bankruptcy of the corrupt and inefficient regime in South Vietnam, the anti-war movement grew. By 1968, U.S. President Lyndon Johnson was telling the American public that the war was all but won, as the communists had been defeated in every single engagement. Starting on January 31, 1968, during the Tet Lunar New Year holiday, communist forces launched a series of attacks in cities and military installations throughout South Vietnam. The Communist Party's Politburo believed that the entire population would rise to greet the communists as liberators and overthrow the southern regime. When fighting reached Saigon, both the South Vietnamese Presidential Palace and the U.S. Embassy were attacked in full view of the press. Military police got back into the compound of the $2.5 million embassy complex at dawn. Before that, a platoon of Viet Cong were in control. The communist raiders never got into the main chancery building. A handful of Marines had it locked and kept them out. But the raiders were everywhere else. By daylight, Tonga, where the embassy is located, was a battleground. No one, unless identified, was allowed in the street. While the offensive was a disaster for the communists, who suffered over 50,000 casualties, they proved to the U.S. that victory was further away than ever. Despite the fact that some units fought well, the South Vietnamese army was regarded as inefficient and corrupt, with officers who sold supplies on the black market. International press coverage was heavily critical of the South and its leaders. Then an incident took place that for many tainted the South Vietnamese cause. On February 1st, with fighting raging in Saigon, Associated Press photographer Eddie Adams observed a bound prisoner being marched down Nyo Gia Tu Street. Expecting an interrogation, Adams and an NBC camera crew recorded the encounter and were shocked when the prisoner was similarly executed in full view of the camera. The perpetrator said, If you hesitate, if you didn't do your duty, the men won't follow you. The shooter was Nguyen Nak Luan. Born in a middle-class family, he undertook training from France and the United States as a fighter pilot, flying missions against North Vietnam, working closely with his friend and fellow pilot, the eccentric Nguyen Cao Ki. When Nguyen Cao Ki became South Vietnam's Prime Minister in 1965, Luan was eventually made Director of South Vietnam's National Police, where he crushed several street uprisings led by Buddhist clergy. Luan had come into conflict with American authorities for insisting that U.S. assets came under Vietnamese jurisdiction. The victim was Nguyen Von Lem, a Viet Cong operative. He was found near the body of Luan's close friend, Lt. Col. Nguyen Thuan, who was murdered along with his mother, wife, and six children, all found with their throats cut. It is unknown today whether Lem was the perpetrator, as Viet Cong assassination squads operated throughout the entire city, but his proximity to the crime marked him for death when he was confronted by Luan. The picture horrified the American public, who questioned why the U.S. was allied with a country that so flagrantly disregarded the laws of war. It's worth noting that large-scale atrocities committed by the communists never received as much media attention due to the lack of a free press in communist-held areas. During the same month, the communists executed an estimated 2,800 to 6,000 civilians and POWs they considered traitors during their occupation of Hue, many of the victims being buried alive. The iron grip the communist side held on the media meant that such events never got as much coverage as failures by the South Vietnamese government. South Vietnamese politician Nguyen Cao Ki had this to say about Eddie Adams' photo. In the click of a shutter, our struggle for independence and self-determination was transformed into an image of a seemingly senseless and brutal execution. With the fall of Saigon in 1975, Nguyen Nak Luan would receive asylum in the United States. The former head of the National Police Service opened a pizzeria in Burke, Virginia. In 1978, the Immigration and Naturalization Services opened a case against Luan based on the belief that he had committed a war crime. The photographer Eddie Adams was called to testify, but shocked the court when he spoke in Luan's favor. The case was eventually dropped due to the personal intervention of U.S. President Jimmy Carter. Adams apologized to Luan in person for the difficulties his picture caused him, and the two even became friends. Luan was always haunted by his past, and in 1991, he was forced to close his restaurant due to a lack of business attributed to his negative publicity. Luan died in 1998, 
and in a eulogy written by Adams, the photographer stated, The guy was a hero. America should be crying. I just hate to see him go this way, without people knowing anything about him. Adams would later say, The general killed the Viet Cong. I killed the general with my camera. Still, photographs are the most powerful weapon in the world. People believe them, but photographs do lie, even without manipulation. They are only half-truths. While it is an exaggeration to call the Saigon execution photograph the image that lost the war, it reveals the role the media plays in shaping public opinion and policy. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and leaving a like.